hi students in this lecture we are going to discuss triangular simple harmonic motion it is almost same as linear simple harmonic motion see one the sentence here if angular acceleration of a body is proportional to negative of the angular displacement from its mean position then it is said to be executing simple harmonic motion if you observe the only changes in the place of acceleration we have taken angular acceleration in the place of displacement it is taken angular displacement right that is the only change I'm writing words here. <clears throat> so it is defined as A equal to minus omega square into X for linear simple harmonic motion. A equal to minus omega square into X. So coming to here, we are writing it is alpha equal to alpha equal to minus omega square into theta. So just replacing acceleration with angular acceleration, replacing displacement with angular displacement. Remaining is as it is. So coming to here, <clears throat> earlier we have written x equal to x naught sine omega t plus phi. Now it is theta equal to theta naught sine omega t plus phi. So almost the same. Right. If you take first derivative, then we are going to get I am writing here. If you take first derivative, theta dot is equal to it is theta naught omega cos omega t plus phi. You can see here theta naught stands for maximum angular displacement. So in this we have taken x naught. It is a maximum displacement now it is a theta naught. It is a maximum angular displacement. Now taking the first derivative of that, that is the rate of change of angular displacement, which gives us angular velocity. So here I am not writing omega. The relation is already having here omega, which stands for angular frequency, which is different from angular velocity. So to avoid confusion, we are simply keeping theta dot. So one dot means it is one derivative. So it is now d theta by dt, which is angular velocity. Now if you differentiate once again, that is a theta double dot. That is theta double dot, which is nothing but alpha that is equal to minus omega square into theta. That is what we have written as equation one, right? Alpha equal to minus omega square into theta. So that is about angular simple harmonic motion. So it is almost same as linear simple harmonic motion. Okay. Let us now take one example for angular simple harmonic motion, that is torsional pendulum. Let us see what is it. So I'm making the diagram here. So we are taking one string whose one end is fixed to ceiling. The other end is now connected to <coughs> center of a disc. So I'm making a disc. 
So we are taking a string here. One end is connected to ceiling. The other end is attached to center of a disc. Now, if we rotate the disc, rotate the disc through some angle, then the wire gets twisted. The wire gets twisted. And because of this twist, a restoring torque will be produced in the wire because of which the disc will rotate back. <laughs> I am repeating. If we rotate the disc, let us say, like this I show, when we are rotating the disc, the wire gets twisted. The wire gets twisted. Because of that twist, a restoring torque will be produced. Because of that, the disc rotates back. So this is what we call angular simple harmonic motion. Okay. And then you can see equation here. Torque equal to I into alpha. That is equal to minus C into theta. So C into theta stands for restoring torque. So if theta is angular displacement, C is a constant which is known as <laughs> torsional constant, then C theta stands for, it is a restoring torque. So here we are taking the assumption that for small twist means through what angle the disc is now rotated, that is now very small. Whenever that angle is very small, torque produced is a proportional to that angle. That's why we have taken here it is a C into theta, which is nothing but Hooke's law. Which is nothing but Hooke's law. Now this torque is equal to I into alpha, which is nothing but net torque. And why we have taken here negative sign? The relation is, if we rotate clockwise, torque will be anti-clockwise. That means alpha and theta, they will be opposite. Or you can say torque and theta, they are opposite. That's why we have taken negative sign. So from this, alpha equal to minus C by I into theta, which is of the form alpha equal to minus omega square into theta. So in the place of omega square, it is C by I. The entire input is given by 2 pi by omega. I am writing here. Time period is given by 2 pi by omega. And here omega value. <coughs> it is root of C by I. So by substituting this value, we are going to get time period is it is a 2 pi root of 5 by C. This is time period for torsional pendulum, where C is a torsional constant, which depends on the nature of material of the wire. Okay. Let us now discuss simple pendulum. First, see what is meaning of simple pendulum. So it is simply a massless string, having a massless string, whose one end is fixed to ceiling. To the other end, we attach one object. Right? This is what we call simple pendulum. I am repeating. A body of mass M is connected to massless inextensible string. String has no mass. Its length is fixed. So one end is connected to ceiling. To the other end, a body is connected. So now we want to calculate its time period of a small oscillations. So here small is very important. It is a time period of a small oscillations. Its meaning is that angle made by the string with the vertical is very small. Means when string is oscillating, you can see this object follows subtler path. I am repeating. 
when string is rotating, this object follows subtler path. Right? Let us see now at one instant, it makes angle theta with vertical. Now see how many forces acting here. So one is mg downwards. Second one tension. Tension is towards the center. I'm sorry, it is towards the point of suspension. Or we can say along the string length. Because both are same. <clears throat> now that point is following subtler path. Therefore, we resolve mg. So resolving that mg, it is one is along the tangent, tangential to the path, and one is normal. So now we are focusing what is a restoring force. So here that object moves back because of this mg sine theta. That means now mg sine theta is providing a restoring force. That is what we have written here. We can see in first step f equal to minus mg sine theta. And see here also we have taken negative sign. So why we have taken negative sign means displacement is right side in this diagram, but a force is now left side. Okay. So now next step in the place of a sine theta, we are taking out theta. Ration is that theta is a small. So theta small means sine theta approximately equal to theta. That means in the diagram, the path appears to be curved, but actually path is almost a straight line. I am repeating. Since theta is very small, this path is not a curve. That path is almost a straight line. Okay. Right. Now, since it is theta, you can say displacement. Displacement is nothing but arc length, right? So, arc length is given by, I am writing here, arc length, that is x, x equal to L into theta. So, in the place of theta, we are writing now x by L. That you can see in the second step, that is f equal to minus mg into x by l. Now rearrange this minus mg by l into x. So it is of the form minus k into x. That means in this problem, force constant is equal to force constant is equal to mg by l. Therefore, now time period is Time period is a 2 pi root of m by k. This is a general one. Now in this k value, mg by l. So substituting that, we are getting 2 pi root of l by j. And here one important point is l. What is l? l is distance between point of suspension to center of mass of the body. See carefully here, what is the meaning of that? Suppose this is now string. There is one spherical body attached at the other end. String length equal to L. String length is L. I am taking as capital. Coming to this spherical body, radius is capital R. So in this, the value of a small L that will be it is equal to capital L plus R because it is a distance between point of suspension to center of mass of the body. So you should not feel that L is standing for length of the string. That is only when object is a point mass. So an object has no size. It is a point mass. Only in that case, this length is equal to length of the string. Otherwise, this is the distance from point of suspension to center of mass of the body. Okay, right.
So this is now what we have derived by using force method. The same thing we can get by using energy method. See how is that? You can see here. Energy of the particle half m v square plus m g l into 1 minus cos theta. So whenever we are saying energy of a system constant, first we have to mention what is a system. So here we are taking that object and earth as a system. So that gravitational force becomes internal force. Then we can speak about gravitational potential energy. Therefore, for earth particle system, total energy is a constant. That is what we have taken here, half m v square plus mg l into 1 minus cos theta. I am drawing diagram once again here. See carefully. String is making oscillations like this. Just to make it visible, I am drawing somewhat more here. Means curved path. It looks like curved path. But actually it is a straight line path almost. Because the angle is very small. It is theta. I am taking now this as reference level. That means here there is no gravitational potential edge. Now see what is the height of the particle from reference level. It is equal to L minus L cos theta. So that is what we have taken there. It is mgh in the place of h L into 1 minus cos theta. Right. So since total energy constant, derivative of that energy must be 0. Therefore, differentiate that and make it equal to 0. So, half m v square derivative is 2va plus mgl derivative of cos minus sun. So, minus of minus becomes a plus into d theta by dt that is equal to 0. Now, remaining part just simplification in that we are taking in the place of d theta by dt, that is omega, which is known as angular velocity. And that is equal to v by l. And you can see here, speed is keep on changing. That means omega keep on changing. That means angular velocity keep on changing. But angular frequency is a constant. Okay. Right. Now, substituting values in that, then we are getting a equal to minus j into theta. In the place of theta, again, <clears throat> so x equal to l into theta. So, in the place of theta, it is x by l. Rearranging that. Now, this is of the form a equal to minus omega square into x. So in the place of omega square, it is now g by l. So again, time period is 2 pi root l by g. Okay. This is how we are doing by using energy method. Let us now see the third method that is torque method. <clears throat> so here about point of suspension, take torque equation. I am drawing diagram one second here. So it is the point of suspension at one instant string makes angle theta with vertical force is acting on the particle one is mg and one is tension. So now we are taking torque equation about the point of suspension. So when you are taking about point of suspension, because of tension, because of tension, torque becomes zero. Now torque is only because of gravitational force. So I'm writing here, it is mg into 
writing either mg into l sin theta otherwise mg sin theta into l both are same only so one is taking component of weight so taking like this component of weight that is mg sin theta then directly into l okay that is what i have taken here and that is equal to mgl into theta because theta is very small therefore sin theta approximately equal to theta which is equal to i into 1 because this is now net torque net torque equal to i into 1 and again here we have taken minus sign the reason is that alpha and theta they are opposite now this is of the form from this we are getting alpha equal to minus omega square into theta of that form so here omega square value is known from that we get what is the time period <clears throat> right like this whenever we want to calculate time period we can use either force method or energy method or torque method so depending on the given problem which is a suitable one means we can say where calculation becomes more simple that we have to adopt okay right let us take now it is a pendulum of large length pendulum of large length but small amplitude so we are taking one special case like it is a pendulum of large length but small amplitude okay you can see diagram here so this length is very large okay and we are taking one assumption here that is bob is oscillating very close to hard surface so very close to means here during oscillations g value is a constant when you are taking assumption bob is oscillating very close to earth surface so during oscillations the value of g is almost constant okay right now let us see what is restoring force okay so coming to your net force first focus here free body diagram so one is mg which is towards the center of the earth so here there is a possibility of writing mg vertically down that is not down it is towards center of the earth and what is the tension now here since amplitude is a very small motion is almost straight line so it becomes now horizontal i am repeating since amplitude is very small motion is almost straight line that means motion is now it is along horizontal that means along vertical net force must be equal to zero so net force is only along horizontal therefore see first step mg sin theta dash plus t sin theta this is now net force along x-axis so here we have taken x-axis is along horizontal now coming to along by axis means along vertical along vertical it is mg cos theta dash minus t cos theta and that should be equal to zero because motion is along horizontal right and here we have taken assumption that oscillations are very small since oscillations are very small theta and theta dash they are very small i am repeating since amplitude is very small theta and theta dash they are very small so since they are very small cos of their values will become one so cos theta dash and cos theta their values will become one therefore tension equal to mg now take this equation or this relation 
in the net force. Let's see what we get. So coming to net force, it is mg into theta plus theta dash. Because since angles are small, sine theta approximately equal to theta, sine theta dash approximately equal to theta dash. So it is now mg into theta plus theta dash. That is equal to mg into in the place of theta x by l. You can see diagram here. Theta, this is now displacement is x. Therefore, x equal to l into theta, right? I am writing once again here. x equal to l into theta. It is also equal to r into theta dash. Therefore, in the place of theta writing x by n, in the place of theta dash, it is x by r. Okay. So, f let equal to mg into something into x. So, it is of the form f equal to minus k into x. So, here we can take minus. Why minus means this net force is opposite to displacement. So, we got here force constant. I am writing here that the force constant is now k equal to mg into 1 by l plus 1 by r. This is a force constant. Then time period is 2 pi root m by k. After substituting this, we are going to get t equal to root of 1 by g into 1 by l plus 1 by r. This is time period of small oscillations, right? Now in this, if you take length is very large, it is given here. Length is very large, means if l tends to infinity. If l tends to infinity means 1 by l becomes 0. So remaining is now 2 pi root r by g. R is now radius of the earth. Taking the values of R and G. This comes out to be approximately 84.6 minute. In the same way, if you are taking L equal to R, then time period becomes 2 pi root R by 2G. So which comes approximately 59.8 minutes. So this is about pendulum of large length. Okay.